That's right. We are Village Vicing again today. He is Zach Blackerby. I'm Brad Law. It looks like I'm in witness protection or in an underground bunker somewhere, <laughs> but that's all right. Um, You're in a cave. <laughs> it's, it, it kind of feels that way. Um, that's right. You ever have a hotel room that doesn't face an out? You don't have an outside window. You have an inside window. You you face the lobby. You can look out onto the lobby of the hotel. Oh, you, gotcha. Yeah, but you can't look outside. And that's what we're what's what we have today. So this is the live look at Brad's content cave for the next yes. few days. The, the BCC is what it is. And uh, all right. So it's <laughs> don't you love that? Yeah. Um, it's Friday. I think we're 16 weeks away, Zach, from the football season. Okay. 16. And if you add 10 and six, you get 16. And so with that in mind, I have a question for you today. Sure. And we're gonna we're gonna debate this because I think we're gonna have different answers. And I would love to hear people uh or, or read what people have to say in the comments and what what you guys think, what the what the villagers think as well. Is it more likely that the 2024 Auburn football team gets to six wins? or only wins six games. Wow. Is more like now what I'm not talking about is their final record closer to six or 10. There are two options. One is 10, one is six, which is the most likely. Sure. And that's where we start the conversation. Sure. And, you know, I don't think either of those things are going to happen. Okay. I'm just going to go ahead and preface this because I could just see a message board grabbing this and running with it. Sure. It's been a big week, Brad. But as far <laughs> as um, as far as which one's more likely, I'm going to say six wins. Auburn okay. getting exactly six wins is more likely than Auburn getting exactly 10. And I think that just comes down to, I mean, they'd have to really go on a tear. Is going on a tear possible? Sure. But over the last several seasons, we've seen, you know, we talk about these toss up games mm -hmm. and, you know, Auburn needs to win these, you know, the Penn States of the world. And they just uh, they just don't they just don't win those. And so I, I think we're all in agreement on what the gimme games are. Alabama, a yeah. and Cal, New Mexico, Arkansas, Bandy, ULM. Those are the six Auburn should win. Yeah. And your toss up games, I think we'll all agree. Oklahoma, Missouri, Kentucky, and AM. And in order for Auburn to win 10 games, I think they need to win all of those. Yeah. And I just think it's more likely that they lose all of those than it is that they win all of those. Okay. The the problem, I guess, with this discussion is you can't like you're all you have to go on is recent history. All you have to go on is recent history. Um and because those toss-up games haven't gone Auburn's way, I understand not not wanting to call for them to go Auburn's way. I'm going to add another game to the toss-up uh, category. I think the Alabama game is in the toss-up category. Okay. Certainly because could be. I want to see them first, and they just lost so much. Right. I, I don't think you can disregard how much they lost and how the first season go. I'm not calling for them to go seven and five, eight and four. I'm not calling for a closer to 10 or close six Alabama, but we do have to see because yeah. they lost a ton of really top quality pieces from that team. So I think that's another one in the toss up category. I'm reminded of 2004. Uh, I, I think that in 2004, a lot of Auburn fans felt similar to what you just described. Every toss-up game yeah, went the other way for a period of two or three years until 2004, until Jason Campbell hit Courtney Taylor against LSU, and that was the thing that kind of got him got over the hump. And yeah, so they, and that's what they, makes they those years those early. Yeah, and that's what makes those years special, 2010 yeah. – 2013, 2017 to some extent. Mm -hmm. And it's these, you got to win these toss up games. And Auburn didn't do that. They really haven't done that yeah. since, you know, a handful of games in the 2019 season. And mm -hmm. they really haven't done it since then. Um, you know, Auburn hasn't beat a team that finished with a winning record since that old Miss game in 21, which was a great game. 
you think back to, to how you felt after that game, and it's like, we've arrived, we're here, and boy, yeah. were we wrong on that. But I, I think, yeah, I think when you look at it, like you can make a case. And I don't think it's much of a stretch to make a case yeah. for Auburn beating Oklahoma, for Auburn beating Missouri, for Auburn beating Kentucky. And That's for Auburn seven. Beating A&M. Yeah, I mean, I don't think you can – I don't think it's tough to make a case there at all. Yeah. Um, the only ones I really struggle with making a case for is Georgia and Bama, and I'm with you on the Bama thing. I just need to see it first. I'm not sure. Quite, I'm not quite, you know, buying the skies falling up there as much as some folks. I do think there are signs that it could. I just, mm-hmm. I just don't think it's falling yet. Um, so yeah, to me, to me, I, I think, I think it is more likely that Auburn wins six games than ten, but mm-hmm. I don't think either of those are super likely. Um, it's the reality is somewhere it's somewhere in the middle. Right. Yeah. Um, I, I'm going to, and I'm going to go with 10. And again, this isn't the debate. I try to bring you to my side. You, you bring me to yours, but I think because this is just more of an explanation, the reason why I, I think 10 is more likely than six is to only win six. Then that means those, those games that you feel very comfortable with, as we stated before, A and M Cal, New Mexico, Arkansas, Vanderbilt. That's five. Mm-hmm. Um, A&M. Well, no, ULM is on that list, too. I didn't even look at ULM. So, really, you, Alabama, A&M, Cal, New Mexico, Arkansas, ULM, Vandy. That's six. So, all Auburn. So, so for Auburn to only win six, that's all of those other games go the other way. That you yeah. don't get Oklahoma or A&M at home. You do, right, and and you just and so, I, the amount of talent that has been added and the mm-hmm. roster improvement to this team, I just I, I, for all those stars to align and Auburn to lose all of those games, I just don't think that's as likely as a scenario where you beat Oklahoma at home. Now you're at five and zero. Oh, you're kind of off to the races. Georgia in Athens is Georgia in Athens, and that's been a nightmare the last three times they've played over there. Haven't right. won over there since 05. Haven't been close in a long time. Sure, but then you get the bye week. Missouri lost an O tackle to the, or they lost a tackle to the NFL. They lost a ton of defensive guys. Don't know yet. Kentucky, you feel pretty good about chances to win that game. On the road, I I'm think. feeling better and better about that game um, by the week, yeah. actually. Yeah. And we discussed either earlier this week or last week about Texas A&M and not being favored against them at home and why we don't believe that, that should be the case. I feel better than 50 50 about that matchup. And then we'll see about Alabama. So I just, I think there are six games on the schedule that you start out and say those are, you feel comfortable about those being yeah. wins. And then you just need one more. Actually, you in this scenario, I guess you need four more because it's it's either six or ten. You're not you're not saying right, the, w- yeah, which is tricky. Two. So yeah, yeah l- let's jump into this a little bit more uh, right. in a moment right here on Village Vice. Brad, I've seen you around town, yeah, and you're always looking so good, so fresh, so fly. Tell me why. Uh, Tell me how? Yeah, yeah. it's it's all rowback. Their performance hoodies. They're comfortable. They look great. They feel great. Um, I really rare. I don't want to take them off when it's time. Um, the polos from Roback are stylish. They are co- they're the most comfortable polo that I own. Is is my Roback polo? Um, and you guys have seen it on the show. We're going to give you an opportunity to own some Roback gear of your very own. Go to Roback.com. Twenty percent off your first order when you use the code Vice Twenty. Make sure you use that code. Not only do you get 20% off of that order, uh, but it helps us as well. And so R-H-O-B-A-C-K, Roback.com, for the best looking and best feeling gear out there today. You'll thank us for it. So I want to add the caveat because I don't want people to think I think Auburn's going to go six and six. Right. If, If the prompt, if the question was nine wins, or six wins, mm-hmm. I would take nine immediately. Yeah. It's just, is Auburn going to be able to do that full sweep of those four toss-up games yeah. or steal one against Georgia or Alabama? I, I just, I don't think that's going to be the case. But if you told me they beat Oklahoma 
they beat Kentucky, they beat Texas A&M, and they lose to Missouri. Like, mm -hmm. one, I would take that in a heartbeat. Yeah. And and two, I would say, yeah, that could be a likely scenario here. Yeah. Uh, we've seen what happens when Auburn gets hot in years past. We haven't seen it the last several years. Yeah. But we all also completely sure. understand the mitigating factors of the last several years. Right. I mean, you can't. And I don't think you you hold this team to the standard of, say, the 2021 or 22 teams. Uh, this is the best offensive line I think we've seen here since 2017. I thought last year's offensive line. I, we did a show last summer uh, before the season started where I compared the offensive line to 2017 and wasn't, wasn't on top of that. But uh, we're wrong. Sometimes we're wrong. Um, mm -hmm. But I do think this is better. I think it's the best line since 17. Obviously, we know all the other improvements that are there. And the reason I think 10 is more likely than 6, um, I, I think 6 is such a baseline. It would really have to go poorly to get to fall to 6. And we've seen what happens when Auburn teams get hot historically. So if you lose at Georgia, now you have an open date. If that next week you tell me that Auburn responds after the open date, they play well. They go get a big road win at Missouri. Now there's not all of a sudden, all of a sudden, there's not another game on your schedule that you feel as close to 50-50 about until you get to the last game of the season. That mm -hmm. Missouri game all of a sudden could become the most important game on your schedule if you have wins over Oklahoma or, or that win over Oklahoma already under your belt. Right. So it's right. kind of your runway. Mm-hmm. Yeah, because I mean, if Auburn starts five and zero oh, and they're able to beat Oklahoma, which I'm, that's uh, of the toss up games outside of Kentucky. Mm -hmm. So I, I think Kentucky's probably the easiest, most likely of those toss up games, and I think after that it's Oklahoma, then A and M, then Missouri. But Oklahoma, man, the more you look at the factors outside of that game, as far as who Oklahoma plays the week before, they host Tennessee. Yeah, and. I don't know. I think them hosting Houston is actually pretty interesting too, but okay. nobody, nobody seems to agree with me on that. But <laughs> I, I just think when you look at everything, all the pressure is on Oklahoma and Oklahoma is a really good football program and they've been dominant in the big 12, but let's don't act like they've dealt with pressure. Well, historically, yeah. I mean, getting to the CFP is, is one thing, which is something Auburn can't say, but, Let's don't act like Oklahoma showed up in big moments consistently. Yeah. And especially if they lose to Tennessee in their first ever SEC game, which I think is likely right now I'm picking Tennessee in that game. Okay. I think all the pressure is going to be on Oklahoma because they're going to be a meme. They're going to be a joke. And the rest of the SEC world is going to be like, yeah, you don't belong. You asked for this, Oklahoma. You asked for this. And they know that. They know that. They're used to being a little brother. They're used to being picked on by Texas. And to me, I, I just think that's... um. I think that's an, a prime opportunity for Auburn to capitalize on all the pressure being on Oklahoma. So once again, like if the prompt was nine wins or six wins, I would take nine in a heartbeat. Sure. I get you. I hear you. Um, yeah. I think to start the season, Oklahoma is the most important game on the schedule, looking at it from a 5,000 foot view. If you beat Oklahoma, then Missouri becomes altogether something different. It's, is this team capable of winning 10 games? And, yes. 100%. And that's where you kind of bring that in. So it, I love the guns blazing approach that you have about Oklahoma today. I don't know where that, I don't know if that's always been there, but I feel like maybe somebody at Oklahoma said something bad about cornerbacks. And so now you're after them. Let me ask you this question. If they beat Tennessee, does the pressure shift to Auburn at all no. in that game I, the next week? I don't think so. I mean, I think Oklahoma is going to be favored in this. We, we talked about that line. Um, earlier. Um, so no, I, I don't think that's, I'm trying to think of a scenario where the pressure would be on Auburn in any game this year. Ooh. I mean, maybe if they, maybe if they won out and they get to a, like, they got to go on the road to Missouri or something like yeah. that, or th they'll lose against Georgia. But if you're no, cause you're going to, that's what we're projecting to happen anyway. Five and five and oh, then lose to Georgia. And then you go to Missouri. So no, I don't, I'm trying to think of a situation where there would be pressure on Auburn. Maybe if, if they're you, maybe if they only have one loss and they host yeah. A and M at the end of the year, like maybe there's pressure there. But 
I have a hard time buying that any game there's going to be more pressure on Auburn than the team that they're playing. If Auburn is is 10, no, I'm sorry. If Auburn's 9 and 1 going to the Texas A&M game, whatever pressure is on Auburn would be crushed by the atmosphere inside the stadium. Like the the swelling and the support and the momentum they would have from being at home in that game. Yeah. I, I think would crush any pressure that would be on them. Cuz at that point you're talking playoff. I mean, if Auburn's nine and one with home games against Texas A and M, and and then the game at Alabama the next week, depending on what kind of season they have had at that point, you know, maybe a little pressure the next week. Clearly, when you when you go to Alabama as a nine or ten win team. Okay, hold on. I, I've got a different way to fa- uh, to phrase this prompt because I okay. think it's the same thing. And we probably should have led with this, but that, okay. that's coming up in just a moment right here on Village Vice. The best way to wager on sports action, it's a great time for sports with the MLB or the MLB uh, heating up and then obviously with the playoffs and with uh, with basketball and with hockey. But uh, be sure to check out our friends at mybookie.ag. And right now, when you make that free account, use promo code next round. You'll get some free money added to your account. It makes a fun sound. It goes bloop. As soon as you bloop. use that code and apply the code next round, that's just money free money being added to your account. So head over to our friends at mybookie.ag. Use promo code next round. So you asked this question earlier in the show. What's more likely, 10 wins or six wins? Mm -hmm. Let Let me rephrase it. In 2024, Brad, what's more likely? Auburn makes the CFP or Auburn doesn't make a bowl game? Because it's the same question. Right? It is. I, I yeah, I think it's more likely that Auburn makes the playoff than misses a bowl game. I don't hesitate with that at all. Because again, I I just think you have six games that for Auburn to lose any of those six, your the wheels fall off. And that's the and then like without any other game being played, there are six that I feel that good about. So mm-hmm. um yeah, I just I, I I don't see a realistic scenario where they they finish with fewer than six. And yeah. I can play the game where they get hot, they win a game at Missouri after an open date. And I understand Missouri doesn't have the toughest schedule before they host Auburn. But, mm-hmm. you know, at any season where teams make the playoffs, you got to have one of those games go your way. And if that's the one for, for Auburn, it won't be their first road game of the year, and they'll be coming off of an open date. So um, once you, And then if you win that, Again, there's not another game on your schedule that you feel like is is as even before the game starts. So, yeah, what do you what do you think? Do you think it's more likely they make the playoff or don't make a bowl game? I think it's more likely they make the playoff. Yeah, yeah. Because this yeah. team with that schedule, you could make the play. Couldn't you make the playoff with nine wins? You need help. You would need other yeah. things to fall the right way. The issue is if you go nine and three, you either you either have some quality wins against Georgia, Bama, or Missouri. To, we'll see what A and M does. Yeah, you either like lose all of your big games, and so you don't really have any quality wins, or you pick up a quality win and then you lose to a team that you're not supposed to. So, no, I, I think you need to go yeah. ten and two. Okay. I think you would need to go ten and two because there's going to be a lot of teams I think that are flirting with that. And Auburn doesn't have any impact on it. Like Ole Miss is in mm-hmm. that situation. Then Auburn doesn't play Ole Miss. A lot of people are projecting. I don't know Good if I'm point. fully buying it or not, but LSU is going to be in that situation too. And obviously Auburn doesn't play LSU. Yeah. Um, and there's going to be a lot of Big Ten teams in that situation. So if it's Ohio State or Michigan that wins it, but you're going to have the other team that's probably going to be 10-2 and two or 11-1. and one. Yeah. Your Oregons and your Washingtons are going to be in that same boat as well. So I do think that kind of floods it a little bit. We'll see about that. Uh, Ohio State, if Ohio State doesn't go 11 and 1 at worst, that that staff should be run out of Columbus with and with what they've happen. done. That yeah, might with, happen. Yeah. With what they've done, that's and I think there's probably a drop off at Michigan too. You don't lose Jim Harbaugh at Michigan for all the jokes and wisecracks and everything. You don't you don't lose Jim Harbaugh at Michigan and just stay at the same level. So, um, all right, let me ask you this as we get set to wrap up. And this Mm -hmm. may be the base for a future episode, but um, one of the projections I saw for the playoff this week 
had five SEC teams in the playoff. That's crazy. So that well, would be so that would be Alabama, Georgia, yep. Ole Miss, Texas, Texas, LSU, and LSU. Okay. So my question to you is: over under four and a half teams from the SEC make the playoff? I'll go under that. Mm -hmm. Okay, I'll go under that. I don't think they're going to want that to happen. Well, I think the Big Ten is too loud for that to happen. Okay. Big Ten could have four. Mm -hmm. I mean, they conceivably, could. I don't I don't know of four teams that would make it from the Big Ten this year. Right. Well, the two we just mentioned, Michigan right. and Ohio State. Is Washington Oregon. gonna fall off now because right. you know everybody left? You would think uh, so. Pro just probably, again. right? Yeah. yeah. I mean, probably. Not Oregon. Even just their coach, but you know, they, you know, they lost their quarterback too. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, Oregon is probably the next one in that conference. Penn State. I mean, they're like maybe. You know, they turn out ten wins like it's you know normal now. It seems like so they'll be in that conversation. They just can't beat Ohio State or Michigan, but they don't have right. to anymore. So yeah, that's true. Uh, that's true. You could have nine teams from the SEC and Big Ten though, and then. And then but the you can't that, with the qualifiers, right? Well, that's because true, I guess. You just have one qualifier from the other places. From the ACC. Yeah. And from the 12. Big 12. And then a group of five, which is so right. dumb. But whatever. We have to let a group of five team in for some reason. <laughs> so Because that would, always works out. Right. Which would be tremendous ammo, by the way, to just break off and do a super conference thing. And it's just the SEC and the Big Ten. And then it's everybody else. I just after a few years we'll chill out about all that and it's like they lose by like four touchdowns every time like why are we doing this why are we doing this but yeah uh no that, that that'll be fun that'll be a fun off season episode in a few weeks for sure that's right uh Brad I think that about does it for today's show all right yep I'm gonna find my way out of this cave here soon um listen thank you for watching thank you for subscribing continue to tell folks about Village Vice and remember until next time everybody has vices. Make sure Village Vice is one of yours.